every picture tells a story. In 1995, to commemorate 50 years since the end of World War II, St. Vincent and the Grenadines issued a set of 39 stamps featuring the Netherlands. Shown together, they provide a colourful, informative, historical and often tragic view of the Dutch nation at war. The Destroyed City, a bronze sculpture by Ossip Zadkeen, commemorates the Rotterdam bombing of the 14th of May 1940, the culmination of the German invasion. Nearly 900 people were killed and 85,000 more were left homeless. The heavily damaged St Lawrence Church was the only remaining building in the medieval centre of the city. The Dutch surrendered that afternoon, signing the capitulation early the next morning. The Netherlands Queen, Wilhelmina, issued a proclamation to her nation of flaming protest and a few days later left for England. Through her radio broadcast from London over Radio Orange, she made herself the symbol of Dutch resistance to German occupation. Wilhelmina's late-night broadcasts were eagerly awaited by her people, who had to hide in order to listen to them illegally. She called Adolf Hitler the arch-enemy of mankind. When churchgoers in the small fishing town of Heisen rose and sang one verse of the Dutch national anthem on her birthday, the town was fined 60,000 guilders. Rudolf Cleveringer was a professor of law at Leiden University. On the 27th of November 1940, after giving a speech protesting against the dismissal of Jewish colleagues, he was arrested and imprisoned for the rest of the war. Leiden students went on strike and the university was closed, only resuming operation after 1945. Onderdijker means underdiver and was used during the war to indicate Jews and other people who went into hiding to avoid deportation. By the autumn of 1944, over 300,000 people were being hidden from German authorities by 60 to 200,000 illegal landlords and caretakers. After the occupation, the Germans took over the existing Dutch press, enforcing censorship and publishing Nazi propaganda. In response, independent Dutch citizens organised their own uncensored illegal papers such as Het Parole and Trouw. Issues were distributed and passed on, despite heavy penalties, including death, for those involved with illegal anti-Nazi publications. Anti-Jewish measures were followed by anti-Jewish riots, and on the 22nd of February 1941, following an incident with the police in an ice cream parlour owned by Jews, 425 Jewish men were taken prisoner in reprisal and transported to Buchenwald and Mauthausen. The violent roundups were witnessed by many non-Jewish inhabitants and in protest this resulted in a general strike in Amsterdam and the surrounding area. The violent suppression of this February strike had a deterrent effect for a long time. Early in 1942, raids were carried out in Amsterdam and the first unemployed Jewish men were deported to labour camps. Deportations went on throughout the year, and by September, some 7,500 Jews had been sent to 37 different labour camps in the eastern and southern Netherlands. On the 15th of July, German authorities began the deportation of Dutch Jews from the Westerbork, Amersfoort and Voop camps to killing centres and concentration camps in Germany and German-occupied Poland. By September the 3rd, 1944, around 100 trains had carried more than 100,000 people to Auschwitz, Sobibor, Theresienstadt and Bergen-Belsen. Titus Bransmar was a Dutch Carmelite friar vehemently opposed to Nazi ideology. In January 1942, he was arrested while delivering instructions to editors of Catholic newspapers from the Conference of Dutch Bishops, ordering them not to print official Nazi documents. Imprisoned in Dachau, he was murdered by lethal injection on the 26th of July, 1942. Archbishop Johannes de Jong ordered his priest to refuse the sacraments to Nazi Dutchmen, and on July the 26th, 1942, he issued a decree that openly condemned Nazi deportations of Dutch workers and Jews. The Nazis retaliated by seizing 245 Catholics of Jewish descent, including Edith Stein, later murdered in Auschwitz. During the war, 175,000 bells across Europe were taken by Nazi Germany and transported to Glockenfriedhofer, or bell cemeteries, the biggest in Hamburg. Some 150,000 were melted down to make armaments, and it's claimed that every single bell was taken out of the Netherlands, with only 300 surviving the war. 
The National Organization for Helping People in Hiding, the LO, became the most successful illegal organization in Europe. Set up in 1942, it supported families in need, including relatives of sailors and hideaways. Of the 14,000 members of the LO, over a thousand were killed or died in prison camps. The LKP, or National Assault Group, literally translated Brawl Crew or Goon Squad, had over 2,000 members conducting sabotage operations and occasional assassinations. Only one of the top LKP members survived the war, and Helena Rietberg, one of the founders of the LO, was betrayed and died in Ravensbrück concentration camp. Camp Vught was the only SS concentration camp outside Nazi Germany. First used in 1943, it held 31,000 Jews, political prisoners, Sinti and Roma gypsies, and resistance fighters. In one incident, on the 15th of January 1944, after a women's protest, the camp commandant put 74 women in a tiny bunker without ventilation. When it was opened the next morning, 10 of the women were dead. 749 other prisoners died in Voot camp. The 1944 rail strike was a national strike by Dutch railway workers. After a call from Radio Orange on the 17th of September 1944 with the coded message, the children of Versteeg have to go to bed, 30,000 workers downed tools. German troop transports had to be stopped as the Allies were planning to carry out Operation Market Garden. But the airborne landings failed at Arnhem and the results of the strike were disappointing as the Germans used their own trains for transporting troops. On the 1st of October 1944, a total of 602 men, almost the entire male population of the village of Putten in the central Netherlands, were arrested and deported to various concentration camps inside Germany. Only 48 returned at the end of the war. The Putten raid had been carried out as a reprisal for a Dutch resistance attack on a vehicle carrying personnel from the Wehrmacht. The inundation of Walcheren was the intentional but uncontrolled military flooding of the former island of Walcheren in Zeeland on and after the 3rd of October 1944 at the time of the Anglo-Canadian operation to open up the port of Antwerp. On the 2nd of October 1944, leaflets were dropped over Walcheren urging civilians to leave the area and a day later Allied air forces punched a hole in the sea dike near Westkapelle. The controversial bombardment cost the lives of 152 civilians and destroyed most of the town. The Dutch famine, known in the Netherlands as the Hunger Winter, took place during the winter of 1944 to 1945. After the railway strike in September, the German administration retaliated by placing an embargo on all food transports to the Western Netherlands. Some four and a half million people were affected and some survived thanks to soup kitchens, but approximately 20,000 people died of starvation in the hunger winter. A food ration provided to adults in Amsterdam in April 1944 consisted of two slices of bread, two potatoes and half a sugar beet. Cats and dogs disappeared. People subsisted on a diet of 500 calories a day. Butter disappeared after October 1944 at first, 100 grams of cheese were allotted every two weeks, but meat coupons were worthless. By April 1945, the bread ration dropped to 400 grams a week, and together with one kilogram of potatoes, this then formed the entire weekly ration. As for heating, empty homes in Amsterdam's old Jewish neighbourhoods were stripped for fuel. In remaining homes around town, interior doors, window sills, fireplace mantles and shelving were converted to firewood. City parks were stripped of their trees and wooden benches. Entire households huddled together in their living rooms, beds and all, to be nearer their wood-burning stoves. Various initiatives were taken to deal with the severe food shortages. In April, British and Canadian air forces started Operation Manor with airdrops of food across the country. They were also helped by the US Army Air Forces with Operation Chowhound. The Canadians were given the important and deadly task of liberating the Netherlands from Nazi occupation. From September 1944 to April 1945, the 1st Canadian Army opened the port of Antwerp for Allied use and then cleared northern and western Netherlands, allowing food and other relief to reach millions of desperate people. More than 7,600 Canadian soldiers, sailors and airmen died fighting in the Netherlands. Amsterdam joins the rest of the Netherlands on the 4th of May when its citizens pay their respects to the victims and fallen soldiers of World War II. 
Then there's a national festival on the 5th of May as the people take to the streets to celebrate their freedom on Liberation Day. The liberation in Amsterdam actually took a tragic turn in 1945. On the 7th of May, after the official retreat of the Germans was announced, thousands of people gathered in Dam Square. Suddenly, German soldiers located in a high building started shooting at the crowd, killing 20 people and injuring 120. A day later, on the 8th of May, Canadian forces entered the city.